The movie begins in 1996, otherwise known as Year Zero. A team of agents arrives at an orphanage, and they gather several orphan babies that were left by their parents. Doctors put special tags on each baby, and they are put in a program. And these children are to be future perfect soldiers. They are selected at birth, and then go through an extremely difficult training program. We see the children grow up and they are taught that weakness is not possible, and that they must be perfect at all times. The children are made to watch animals fight and kill each other. They are also under supervision at all times, and they cannot leave their rooms. After eight years, the kids are now training their minds and other skills, and they have to be in classrooms on a daily basis and work extra hard. Every day their actions in the classroom are graded and measured, and they are being watched by men and women in suits. After 12 years, the training is now even more brutal, such as the kids have to run many miles each day, and every one of the kids has to be in perfect condition. One day, they are running and one boy falls behind. He is too tired and so he loses focus. The people who are training the soldiers order a truck to go for the boy. When the boy is faced with the man in the truck, he is soon killed without mercy. In this program, those who are weak and slow, get killed, like they are animals. The boys can't react to their friend getting killed but they must continue running. This brutal military training meant to turn them into living weapons. After a few more years, the teenagers now train with guns and have to kill every target. They can't have any any mercy in their missions. Finally, when they reach the age of 17, they are now fully formed weapons and are ready for combat. The training program is over, and all the soldiers get a special tag tattoo on their face. We are then introduced to our main character, Todd, who has been a soldier for many years. In the present, it's the year 2036, and he is one of the best killers on the planet. He has had many injuries over the years, but every mission is a success. We see him go all over the world with his soldiers, even on the moon. The fights are brutal, and he has no mercy. In one battle in Russia, we see that he even kills an innocent woman, just to kill his target. He doesn't care about his soldiers, only the mission and to be the best. He was one of the kids that were taken in 1996 and is now a true leader. Currently, Todd is between missions and is preparing for his next one. And that is his entire life. He has never had a normal interaction or been outside as a human. Todd is a veteran and his entire unit is made of soldiers who have been through many missions and they are the best of the best. We are then introduced to the commanders of this entire soldier program. Colonel Meekum is a very high-ranking officer and he has created a whole new soldier program. He created the project in the past but now with the work of the best scientists he has made even better soldiers. We see a whole new unit arrive. They are much younger than Todd and his other soldiers. This new unit was genetically engineered. They were literally created to be superhumans. Also Colonel Meekum brags that this new unit has no human emotions and they are just created to kill and destroy. There are just aggressive emotions so they will be much better in battle. Captain Church on the other hand disagrees with this new program. And he is the current commander of Todd and his veteran unit. He thinks that the old soldiers are much better because they have more war experience. Captain Church tells Meekum that his new soldiers have no experience in a true battle so they are not as good. Meekum is pretty confident so he proposes a test. The veteran unit versus the new unit to see who is better. Todd looks at one of the new soldiers, Kane. His eyes are totally dead and he is a pure killing machine. The test exercise begins and the new soldiers are better in everything. They are more precise with the guns and they can lift more more weight and not get tired. Now is the time for a running exercise. Todd is the first one to run and he has a certain amount of miles and time. Captain Church thinks that the veterans are still superior because of their stamina and experience. Meekum is ready to prove him wrong, he activates Kane and he goes running. It's very obvious that Kane is much faster than Todd. He runs right past him even if he started much later. When both Todd and Kane arrive at the finish line, Captain Church is still not convinced. He thinks that the new soldiers lack spirit. Meekum tells Kane to climb a steel chain and Todd does the same. Kane is once again much faster and he has more energy. Then Captain Church orders Todd and the rest of his men to attack Kane with everything they have. They start to beat each other up in the air. And soon, Kane kills several soldiers and they fall down. Todd is the only one left and Kane is just too strong. Todd jumps on Kane and injures his eye and face. Then Todd falls down and is knocked out. And Captain Church thinks that Todd has also died from the fall. Kane lands on the ground. 
and Mecham is furious at him. His eye and face are now really injured, and Mecham thinks that he is now a soldier with a defect so he is of no use. Captain Church thinks that Todd is really dead so he decides to accept a new group of soldiers. Mecham looks at the old soldiers who are dead and tells the officers to throw them out as garbage. They are no longer of any use. The old veterans who are still alive don't get killed but are no longer on active duty. They are now working on unimportant jobs in the military. A giant garbage ship goes to a planet called Arcadia. This is a garbage disposal planet and basically it's horrible for life. There are giant piles of garbage garbage everywhere, and life is very difficult. Todd suddenly wakes up in the garbage spaceship. He is there with other bodies of dead soldiers, and there is a lot of garbage. The ship is loading even more trash parts. Todd is scared and confused, he doesn't understand how he ended up in this situation. The lower parts of the ship start to open, it's time to let go off the trash. Todd tries to hold on, but he falls down on the planet. Todd manages to survive the fall, and now he is on Arcadia. He has landed on a giant tower of garbage, and sees that there is only garbage and shipwrecks on this planet. Todd walks down and starts to explore, and he sees that in fact he isn't totally alone on this planet. He sees several people that are totally covered in rags, and they are walking somewhere. Todd decides to follow them, as they are his only chance of survival. A giant storm starts to hit and Todd has to hold down. He is also very injured, so he doesn't have much strength left. Todd gets out of the storm and walks into a graveyard, and it seems that many people have died on this planet. He arrives at what seems to be a space colony, and he sees that these people have built their houses from garbage and the ship parts. There are actually a lot of people in this colony. Suddenly, a gust of wind throws Todd to the floor. He is totally tired but before he passes out, he spots some kids looking at him. The colony is now in a state of panic, and they are confused about how someone could have found their colony. It has been many years since anyone came to this planet. Some people in the colony don't trust Todd, and some want to help him. Soldiers from the colony go look if Todd came with someone else, but they are disappointed when they find out that he is totally alone. Todd is being taken care of by Mace and his wife Sandra. It is then revealed that this colony was not always here. These people were on their own ship and traveling somewhere very different. Their ship broke and they crash landed on this planet. That was three years ago, and since then no help has come. At first all the people truly believed that someone was going to come for them, but nobody ever arrived. And Todd is the first human they have seen in years. The community wants to accept Todd, but it's hard for him that has never had any family or friends, he is only a soldier with no emotions. The people in the colony like to live a very relaxed life, which is strange for Todd, and he has a hard time adapting to their daily lives. There is also very bad weather on this planet, so it's pretty hard to survive. Todd meets Nathan, he is the son of Mace and Sandra. Nathan can't talk, so he and Todd create a bond. Todd doesn't like talking, so it's easy with Nathan. Nathan could probably talk, but when he was just a boy, he was bitten by a snake. And since then, he has been afraid and can't speak. While spending more time with Nathan, Todd starts to remember his childhood. He remembers how traumatic it was for him and the rest of his group. While he has brutal flashbacks, Todd thinks that one of the people in the colony is actually his enemy from the war. He attacks this person and almost kills him, but he is stopped at the last moment. Todd is also very brutal in his approach to people. When Nathan is again in the presence of a snake, Todd uses his army teaching to show him how to deal with it, and wants Nathan to attack the snake and kill it, that is the only way to not be afraid anymore. Sandra and Mace think that this is much too brutal for a child and they don't want their son to be scared. Also the other people in the colony are afraid of Todd. He just doesn't fit in as he is from a totally different world. Eventually, they all decide that he doesn't belong and they send him away. Todd experiences sadness and real emotions for the first time. He is totally confused when he starts to cry because he never had a chance to do so growing up. Soon after that, Sandra and Mace almost get bitten by a snake. Their son Nathan has found his courage and kills the snake just like Todd told him to. They realize that Todd was right all along and tell the colony that they should invite him back. People in the colony are mixed on that idea, some are still scared of Todd. Soon after that, the new soldiers arrive on the waste planet. Colonel Meekham then decides to use his new soldiers on the colony. Since nobody will come looking for them, they are perfect targets for training. Mace goes out to search for Todd to bring him back. 
He is faced by the soldiers and they kill him without mercy. Todd is now also attacked by the soldiers so he has to use his veteran soldier knowledge and survive. He knows the planet, so he can hide and run from the elite soldiers. He actually manages to kill some of the soldiers and save the colony. Meekum is angry that his soldiers are dead, so he sends even more guns to the field. Todd has to use special tactics where he attacks from the shadow. He attacks the soldiers and then runs away. He kills almost everyone except Kane. Soon, Todd and Kane fight and Todd actually manages to beat him in a battle. Meekum is now totally panicking, so he tells Todd's old soldiers that they need to detonate a bomb and destroy the planet. He leaves the squad on the plane and then runs away with his ship. Todd arrives and his army friends decide to follow him instead of Meekum. Because he was their leader and fought for many years together, they take over Meekum's ship and leave him on the garbage planet and put all the colonists on the army ship and leave. Meekum kills himself, trying to deactivate the bomb. The colonist originally wanted to go to Trinity Moons. And that is where Todd decides to lead them. Todd is now a father figure to Nathan. And they watch the stars together. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next video. Back in my bag and I gotta brag, I do this shit for real. When we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal. We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel.